Welcome to MMA on the Rocks. My name is Bill Welker. You are listening to episode 198 of the podcast. Are you joining us live here on Facebook or YouTube? Today is Sunday, July the 5th. It's weird saying July the 5th after yesterday. We're saying 4th of July. But anyway, happy 244th birthday to the United States of America. And we have some crazy fights coming up next week. Fight Island is finally here. Before we get into all that, let me introduce the other folks I have on the line here. I have UFC featherweight and friend of the show all the way from Tampa, Florida, about 20 minutes away from where I'm sitting right now. But, you know, quarantine life. We got to do this thing long distance. Billy Q, Billy Quarantello, say his damn name right. How you doing, <laughs> sir? <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for having me on this uh, Sunday night, man. It's good to be here. Well, it's good to have you, man. I mean, you've been... Uh, You've been the the center of some drama and some crazy fights and and a whole whole bunch of things that, that we're gonna get into. But first, I gotta introduce my trusty co-pilot here, all the way from New Jersey, Jeff, the Animal Wilson. Jeff, how you feeling on this Sunday evening, my friend? Well, I feel great. I feel free, man. As you can tell, I got my Captain America shirt on because yesterday was July Fourth. So happy birthday to the single greatest country in the world. I don't care what anybody else says, Bill. We got problems. Everybody everywhere has problems. Right? That's, that's true. I mean, sometimes it, it seems a little more overwhelming depending how much you turn on your television. Um, but we don't need to get into any of that here. We're here to talk about fighting and booze and fun stuff. So, Billy, it, I've been meaning to have you back on for the longest time. And it's really been a long time. It's been about a year since we've done the oh, show wow. together. Has it, been, has it been that long? Yeah, I was. Wow. I had to look it up because it, it was right before your contender series fight, and I was telling Jeff, and Jeff was like, "What are you talking about? He was just on a couple of months ago, <laughs> right?" That I mean, these 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 uh these first few months, man, it, it, of this year, you know, it seems like uh you know everything's going by so slow, but next thing you know, you know, the year's halfway over, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, coming up on a coming up on a year on that contender series fight. So I know I've seen you a bunch of times since then, so it doesn't seem like it's been that long. Yeah, yeah, we've hanged out. We've we've trained a little bit, and um, mm -hmm. yeah, but we we just haven't gotten around to do a show. And you're making the you're making the rounds. That you've been on all the biggest podcasts, um, blowing up after the Spike Carlisle fight. But since the last time you've been on the show, Billy, and and you and I have talked a bunch personally, but since the last time we've spoken publicly, uh, you got engaged, you yep. became a homeowner, you got yeah. your black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. You won your contender yeah. series fight in impressive fashion. You won your UFC debut in dominant fashion. And you had, in my opinion, already a contender for fight of the year with Spike Carlisle. Um, so it's been a hell of a year. Do you feel like you're really starting to find your stride uh, in this game here? Yeah, it's, it's it's interesting that, you know, all that happened, you know, in, in this year, you know, this, it's been a, a pretty crazy experience, you know, um, there was obviously times in the, in the past few months where, you know, or, you know, before, before the year started, you know, before this last year, like, you know, talking to you last year, you know, there was times that I, you know, I never thought I'd get to the UFC uh, and just to be two and oh in the UFC, you know, a homeowner in, engaged, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's like one of those things that like, I've been working on all these different things, you know, very goal oriented, trying to do all these things. And it seems like, you know, about the 10 year mark, everything really started coming together. And, uh, and I'm just in a, in a great position right now, even with this whole uh, coronavirus thing, uh, you know, I, I'm still getting ready to, to get another fight, hopefully in August or September. And, uh, you know, things, are, things, things could be a lot worse as, uh, as the animal was saying just a minute ago. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, and it, you know, even though we haven't had you on the show, we've definitely been along for the ride. I don't know if you were aware, but we did like a fight companion thing. We call them brawl crawls here with the manimal uh, for your last oh, yeah, fight. Yeah, I, and I, I heard about man, manimal tagging me in something. <laughs> yeah, he does that. <laughs> I got. I gotta go. I, I'll have to go back and check that out. Manimal, what a, what a great guy that he is. He, I'm sure he mentioned it, but he was out there for my contender series fight, and uh, you know we were staying in the hotel next to each other, so we had a we had a great time there. It was the first time I got to got to meet him, and uh, great great dude that guy is. Oh yeah, we love Manimal. We we have him on all the time, and he's always a blast. He's he's a train wreck, but like the most hilarious <laughs> yeah. kind. And the best part of it was we we finished watching the fight with Spike, and my heart's racing 
Yeah. Because you know we're all we're all yeah, stressing out fight. for you. It, it was really close. I was like, I don't know, man. I thought Billy won, but I'm biased. And then, yeah, of course. <laughs> and Manimal goes, "Fuck it, he's my friend. I give him all three rounds." <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it, Manimal. <laughs> That's great. But um, yeah. So since then, you went back out to Vegas, and uh, you were gonna corner the steamroller, but uh, mm. unfortunate series of events there. You wound up testing positive for a disease you didn't even know you had. Uh, I so know. I, I know you've talked about it a bunch other places already, so we won't dwell on it. But you know, to kind of get into what happened with that whole situation a little bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Strangest thing, man. I, um, you know, so I won my fight against spike came back to Tampa was still pretty much, um, you know, quarantined in terms of, you know, I wasn't really going to the gym because I, I, I kind of jacked my shoulder up. It was like a pre existing injury. Mm -hmm. Um, but so I really wasn't at the gym, so I wasn't surrounded by, you know, 50, 60, you know, you know how it is at Great Tampa South. There's usually 50 people there every night. Yeah. So I came back and I had two weeks for a frivolous fight and I, and I already, I already knew I was supposed to be in his corner. So I didn't really do too much for about a week and a half. And then I had my brother and my, my sister-in-law and a couple people, they came to visit us. So we went out a couple times, you know, we went out and got food. We went to the beach, didn't really do that much. You know, mm -hmm. like we, I wasn't around, you know, 50 to a hundred people ever. So, and I, and I felt fine the whole time. So it was just such a weird thing. Um, mm -hmm. then we, of course, flew, me and Favola got together. We flew out to Vegas, still felt completely fine. Got tested, you know, obviously we were like joking about it. Like, dude, it'd be crazy if one of us tested positive because at <laughs> that point, no one, no one really was testing positive. Yeah. Um, and then sure enough, they, oh man, it's such a scary thing. I woke up the next morning and, uh, it was a text and said, this is, uh, I if it was Amy, this girl, Amy, she goes, Hey, this, no, Amber, it was this girl, Amber. Who I know I've, I've, you know, I've talked to a bunch of times. She goes, Hey, this, this Amber with the UFC, call me immediately. And I was like, Oh no. Oh shit. This is not good. They're not, they're never going to text you something like that in the morning. Um, if it was like, you know, they're, they're not going to give me an extra bonus check in the morning like that. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, Oh God. So, I called her and she said, uh, you know, you tested positive. She said, don't worry because, and this is, you know, this is like what a lot of people are going through this, this COVID. It's just so like, we don't really know too much about it yet. Um, and she said, don't worry about it because, you know, she's like, stay isolated. But the last two weeks there, they had fights and they had two different cases where they had a person test positive. That was a false positive. So uh -huh. like, they tested positive and then they tested the next day and it was negative. So I was still obviously really worried, but I was like, all right, well, let's see what happens. So two guys came up in, a, in hazmat suits and tested me again. And they pretty much, <laughs> yeah, it was like, it was like somebody like, you know, a movie, like an alien movie. And uh, I was like, all right, guys. So they test me again. Um, at that point, me and Frivola were still in the same hotel suite. So like he was on one side, I was on the other side, you know, in different rooms. Mm -hmm. um, they basically told him to get a different room. They gave him a different room right next door. So he left at that point, and then we stayed quarantined the entire day. That was on Wednesday. And he um, still and thinks I, he's fighting at that point? Yeah, yeah, he's still hoping, you know, he's still – and I'm actually telling him the same thing, you know. This this kind of stuff happens, you know, with fighters all the time. You know, people back out, people miss weight, people, um, you know, get injured or, or uh, you know, can't make weight. So basically the mentality is always, you know, you got to keep training like the fight's on. So – I know he was doing like hotel workouts. He was like on like the treadmill downstairs and uh, we were just hoping for the best. And it was just, oh man, it was so boring. Cause after that, I basically had to stay quarantined that whole Wednesday. They came back Wednesday night and they were like, um, you're still positive. So they're, they're going to basically decide if the fight's on or not. So mm. Matt had uh, Matt before he came to, so he went from New York to Tampa, trained here in Tampa for about six weeks and then went to Vegas before he came to Tampa, he got tested and he had the antibodies. So apparently he already had it at some point and was, you know, had the, had the antibodies for it. So mm -hmm. we thought he made a strong case to still be able to fight. Sure. Um, he got, he got tested again and was negative again. So he was negative twice. Um, but I feel like the UFC just didn't want to take any chances on it. So mm -hmm. they basically were like, listen, we got to cancel this fight. Um, you know, your guys is op the fight's off either way. Your guys' options are either to stay in Vegas for 14 days or you can drive back. 
but you know, you can't fly. So you're on like a no fly list now because you tested positive. So for me, it was an easy decision. I'm like, I'm not staying here quarantined for 14 days. Um, I'm hitting the road. And then yeah. Matt took, Matt took about a day to figure it out. And then on Friday morning, we hit the road and drove all the way back. It was, it was terrible. <laughs> Was it, was it like a, like a fun road trip or was it like every now and then he would look over at you like, dude, you fucked up my whole weekend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, uh, he was, uh, you know, you, you know, uh, we've been friends for, uh, over 10 years now. So we know each other really well. He, he flew out and cornered me in my fight. Mm -hmm. There was a little bit of animosity, like kind of like joking animosity, but, um, the UFC ended up taking care of him. They ended up giving him his, his show and his win, win purse. Mm -hmm. So he ended up making out pretty well. Um, I'm, I really didn't get anything out of it. I had to pay for my own flight there and then drove back and I didn't make anything from it. So, uh, yeah. you know, if anyone should be upset, it should be me <laughs> Yeah. now, but I, you know, I get it. You know, he didn't, he didn't get a chance to fight, which sucks, but like I said, the UFC took care of him. Hopefully he can fight again in, in August. That's what he's looking for. And just the whole experience, you know, we already look back on it. Like, Holy crap. It was just so crazy, but you know, we're both back now. So it's all good. Yeah. Yeah. I can understand there being tension, especially like when he's cutting weight and everything and you know, the, you, you have that added frustration, but it's, it's definitely not at you. And I know you're not the type of guy to take it personally anyway, but yeah, I guess, I guess you got kind of screwed there. And so did Frank Camacho because <laughs> his opponent who pulled yeah. out gets, gets his win bonus and uh, he has to face a new yeah. opponent and winds up getting knocked yeah. out. But yeah, credit man. to him, like I was looking forward to that fight so much, but credit to Frank was, for yeah. Yeah, that was going to, I think that was going to be a really good fight. And, um, you know, every opportunity, you know, there's always positive and negative. Some other guy got a chance and he went out there and took the, took advantage of it and got the win. Uh, you know, me and Matt are still cool. He doesn't really care. His dad actually called me. Like, the bulldozer. Did, yeah. The bulldozer called me, uh, the morning, <laughs> like on, on Thursday morning, uh, when we basically knew the fight was off and he was basically like, listen, Billy, dude, we got your back no matter what, like it's all good. Like these things happen. There's nothing you could do about it. You know, you're mm -hmm. part of our family. So we're, we're, we're cool. Me and the frivolas, I'll, I'll get along really well. And, uh, you know, like I said, Matt got paid, so he's back in long Island now and we'll both be fighting again soon. Yeah. That had to make it sting a little less that they still took care of him financially. That was a, that was a stand up move on the part of the UFC to do that. And it's weird because they don't really have a protocol to handle this because like the week before Ian Heinish's coach, tested positive wound up being a false positive but they just didn't let him come so he just didn't have him in his corner and then yeah. with this one they were like no we got to call the fight off like and even knowing that there are false positives and everything out there you gotta you gotta err on the side of caution i mean you're handling a, a multi-billion dollar company you gotta you gotta make these tough decisions sometimes um yeah exactly and sometimes the decision is made for them like when a fighter in the main event tests positive for COVID-19 and you got to find a replacement the last minute. And our buddy Mark on the other side of the world in Australia says he just woke up any breaking MMA news overnight. Well, Mark, <laughs> if you really there haven't you heard, I don't know if you're being facetious or not, but if you really haven't heard Gilbert Burns tested positive for COVID-19, he had to withdraw from the title match with Kamara Usman. And as of like two hours ago, he was replaced by Jorge Masvidal officially per dana white's twitter uh billy i don't know if you got this news i know you're pretty on top of things but uh mm -hmm. give me your thoughts yeah since i've uh, i'm still in isolation i had i had plenty of time to look at mma twitter so yeah i'm uh man what a what an exciting fight man i really hope you know masvidal has really been training hard because you know when we always train you no know, fighters are always training uh but you know to get ready for a world title fight against you know arguably you know one of the best Walter weights of all time. Uh, you know, there's, it's, it's a, it's a tough, uh, tough task ahead of him, but I think we're all, uh, I think I speak for everyone in the MMA world, which this is going to be an exciting fight. We're definitely going to watch it. I'm going to watch it. I love it. I think it's a, a really a great matchup. I wish they would have made this fight originally. And then, mm -hmm. you know, they, they both would have been ready to go. Um, I think, you know, it's it's a tough fight for both guys. You know, Gilbert Burns and Masvidal are a lot different styles. They fight a lot different. So uh, I'm definitely going to be tuning in and, uh, you know, the show goes on. Yeah. I feel like for a guy like Usman, though, his game plan doesn't change. Like, you know what he's going to mm -hmm. do and he'll come out there with the same approach no matter. The only time we've seen him with a different approach was his last fight 
with Covington yeah. where he stood the whole time, didn't go for one single takedown. But um, the, the most unfortunate thing, and I am so excited for this fight. I almost feel bad being excited for this fight because of how bad I feel for Gilbert Burns because I'm such a big yeah. fan of Gilbert and he really deserved this opportunity. I say on the show all the time, I think he's the most underrated combat sports athlete on the planet probably. The fact that he competes in so many different venues and does so much and he's willing to step up at any time to take a challenge. And I know you must know Gilbert a little bit because he's come through Tampa South. Uh, have you had yep. an opportunity to train with him at all? Yeah. Uh, I, the, the one time that he was the one time that when we were there at the same time, I got a chance to watch him in uh, Matt Arroyo roll. Um, but I was already, I was, I was kind of banged up, so I didn't get a chance to roll with him, but I will say this, he's a super nice guy. Uh, him and his brother are both studs, you know, they trained right here in South Florida. Uh, mm -hmm. so yeah, there, he's not going anywhere, you know, as much as you feel bad for him right now, he, you know, the, the public usually gives the perception of fighters and everyone knows that he was game. He was ready to step up. They knew, you know, everyone knew he probably would have gave Usman a pretty tough challenge, you know, mm -hmm. could have beaten him, who knows. Um, but I, I don't think, I don't think really he loses too much stock. I don't think he's going to get a title shot next, but maybe who knows? Yeah. Yeah. You never know with, with the way things are going now and yeah, maybe somebody else tests positive and you know, he'll always be ready. Um, Jeff, yeah. what are your thoughts on this uh, last minute replacement here by Gamebred stepping up? Yeah, dude, huge letdown. You know, I I've been watching Gilbert Burns for a while. I, I I like you said, he's so game for any rule set, any opponent. So it's a huge letdown to see that he's not fighting Kamar Usman. And you know, if you're Kamar Usman, I think you're breathing a sigh of relief right now, man. Um, the guy who was on the tear in your division is is out for the time being and now you have an opponent on six days notice you know things are kind of in his favor but dude it's so exciting man um and i hope the ufc is taking care of jorge masvidal now for him to step up on six days notice i i mean i can really i can't think of anybody else who would do that against kamaru usman man um like you said he's a monster dude i mean you've seen very few people do to tyron woodley what he did to tyron woodley man mm -hmm. So I, I, you know, I hope the UFC is really taking care of Masvidal. But dude, what an exciting fight, man! Uh, I can't wait. And it probably will boost the pay per view numbers for him too, because uh, as much as I'm a fan of Gilbert, he's not as well known as as Masvidal. Masvidal is one of the biggest stars the sport has right now, so it'll probably boost those pay per view points for Usman a little bit. And as big of a fan of Usman as I am, he's not the biggest draw. Yeah. Um, you know, that just happens to be the case with guys who fight with his particular style. And he's, he's not a big shit talker. He just goes out there and, and does what he needs to do and dominates. Um, but you know, people don't always appreciate that. Um, Billy, you got any other thoughts on this main event before we move on down the line here? Uh, no, I'll be watching it. And, uh, I think what the animal is saying is, uh, is accurate. I think, uh, Gilbert Burns might've been you know, just stylistically, might have been a, a tougher matchup for Usman, um, but now it's a, it's a really exciting fight, and you know, Masvidal's got that that knockout power, so it's gonna mm -hmm. be a great fight, I think. Yeah, I feel like it's I feel like similar to how I felt before Masvidal was gonna fight Ben Askren. It's like, well, can he keep it on the feet? And then <laughs> yeah. he, didn't, he didn't have to. <laughs> yeah, Askren didn't stay on his feet for more than five yeah. seconds. Exactly. All right, Jeff, I'm gonna lead with you on this one because I definitely want the featherweight in the room to weigh in on this championship fight. Alexander Volkanovsky in a rematch is going to defend the title against Max Holloway. It's weird to think, you know, a year ago, last time you and I talked, Billy, we, we thought like Max Holloway was going to be on this epic run, which, you know, he definitely was, but here we are a year later and now we got a new champ. Um, so I'll start with you, Jeff, give me your thoughts on, on Volkanovsky here. Um, it seems like he's the favorite going into this one, but that last fight was pretty close. Yeah, dude, I'm excited. I think that if you're Volkanovsky, you go in with the same strategy, dude. I was loving the leg kicks in that first fight. I thought it was a genius move from Volkanovsky. You know, he's got those thick legs, uh, you know, being a former rugby player and just um, being able to neutralize Max Holloway's movement, man. And, you know, a lot, so much power comes from the hips and everything. So I thought it was a really good strategy against somebody who's lanky and, and taller than you. So, I think you do basically more of the same if you're Volkanovski. And I'm curious to see how Max Holloway bounces back from this. You know, 
he lost to Conor McGregor before. He's lost to Dustin Poirier before, but the circumstances were just different. You know, um, he was already a UFC champion the second time he lost to Dustin Poirier. The first time he lost to Dustin Poirier and even to Conor McGregor, it was early on in his career. So, you mm -hmm. know, was able to bounce back from that so i'm curious to see how you know a more seasoned a more veteran max holloway approaches this fight now. yeah i i mean if, if a if a champion deserves an immediate rematch it's got to be max holloway billy this is the top of your division here um yep. so you're you're looking up the ladder at these guys so you're you're probably going to have a different perspective uh, on it than we are w what are you looking at with this fight yeah, man, I'm just super excited. Uh, I'm 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 so happy they gave Max the immediate rematch. I think he deserved it. Um, mm -hmm. I've been a huge Max Holloway fan just for years. Um, you know, I watched that fight in Atlanta that he unfortunately lost, but I got a chance to meet him there and talk to him just for a couple minutes. Um, and uh, yeah, I can see it. I can I get I know it's going to be a similar fight. I, I think it's going to be a very close fight. I'd like to see a little more output from Max and, you know, do some, you got to do something about those leg kicks, which I'm sure he's going to address. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just hoping for a great fight. I would love to, you know, eventually fight Volkanovski. I don't necessarily want to fight Max because uh, I'm just such a big fan of his, you know, mm. it's hard not to root. It's hard not to root for a guy like Max Holloway. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely looking at this one with, uh, a lot of intentions, maybe see those guys down the road in the, in, in a you know, year and a half, two years down the road. Um, you know, when I, when I get myself in that position to fight one of them. Um, so I'll obviously be watching this one as a, as a fan, but more so as a competitor and, and uh, a future competitor to, to one of these guys. Yeah. How does it feel knowing that your division is so competitive now? Because there, there weren't a whole lot of eyes on the featherweight division for a little while. It looked like Max was going to kind of run away with it. But now we got a lot of guys coming up in the mix. Uh, you know, we got guys like yourself. We got, uh, you know, guys further down the card that are fighting here that are really mm -hmm. exciting. Um, and I never thought about the idea of you fighting Max until you just said you didn't want to. And then the idea popped in my head. And I'm <laughs> like, well, that's a really fun fight because you guys have pretty yeah. similar styles. But um, what do you think about the competitiveness of the division right now? Yeah, I think it's a it's a great time. I think the the you know it, bantamweight and featherweight right now are you know and obviously lightweight's always flourishing. It seems like, but yeah, the featherweight lately, man, it's just been great fights. You know that Josh Emmett fight the other day against Shane Burgos, woo, that was yeah. a great fight. Uh, Andre Feely too had a great fight against uh, the Jordine. Um, those were both great fights. Um, Calvin Cater fighting uh, what is it next weekend? Um, there's the top of the division is just a fun, fun division right now. Uh, Dan Ige. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to be a part of it. And, you know, I'm starting to look at these matchups down the road, you know, the, the top 20 guys in the world, there's a lot of really, really fun matchups for me at, at the top. And I'm just, ex I'm just happy that the rest of the world can, you know, can kind of get a chance to see how exciting it is. And, you know, cause for a, a maybe for a little while i think a lot of people thought that max holloway was going to run away with it that he was clearly you know the best you know beating mm -hmm. eldo and, and and you know defending his title and everything um but now it's kind of uh, up in the air you know how does how does like a calvin cater like a josh emmett look against these guys you know how do these this next wave uh, you know how is that how's every, everyone gonna you know fall into position what matchups are going to be made so it's just a really exciting time right now to be a ufc fighter a featherweight fighter uh you know hopefully this this covid coronavirus pandemic kind of calms down a little bit soon and we can kind of get back to normal but uh you know when we do i think uh it's going to be a, a great opportunity for me because i feel like i have a skill set that matches up really well with a lot of these guys yeah yeah i'm i believe that as well but i'm, I'm a little bit biased admittedly <laughs> uh, <laughs> um yeah so let me just talk to you about this landscape right now with the coronavirus thing uh, is the is the UFC actively calling you guys, or do you have to raise your hand and say like, "Hey, I'm I'm here, I'm ready to go. Like, send me fights." Um. Well, we we me and Matt Arroyo and uh, Matt Arroyo and Sean Shelby are always talking, so they've actually um, offered me opportunities. You know, soon sooner sooner than later. So for me, at least, you know, since I already fought during the pandemic, I think what they told a lot of people was you know, like depending which state you're in, depending what country you're in, if you don't feel comfortable fighting right now, you don't have to, you know, like they're not, they're not making anyone fight right now, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but they are looking, uh, what it seems like for, to me, uh, just compared to 
what was going on with the UFC before, it seems like they're giving me more, they're giving me more opportunities now because there's less of less options available. You know, I think a lot of the people in like other countries and, and there's a lot of people that really don't want to either don't want to fight or just can't fight right now. So for me, at least the UFC has been in contact with me, you know, all the time. And they said, if you want to fight, you can fight again in August. Um, you know, you just got to make sure you get some, you know, make sure you're negative, make sure you feel fine, which I do. I feel fine. still. I just got to, I haven't gotten a negative test yet. So I'm still quarantined until, uh, until I get a negative test and then I'll be ready to fight again as, as soon as possible. Oh man. And you, and you never experienced any symptoms throughout the whole thing. The only symptoms that I like looking back on it, I, cause I didn't really know this was like a part of the symptoms until after, but so I have, you know, usually when I go to sleep, I've had, a, I've had, you know, maybe three or four broken noses. I've had it fixed twice. Um, so I've had like a stuffy nose at nighttime during, mm. you know, even when I was in Vegas, I had kind of a stuffy nose. And then some of the food that I ate, like I couldn't really taste it that much. So those were like the only symptoms, but I just thought that was because I had a stuffy nose. There's a lot of times, you know, years ago, months ago, weeks ago, even I'm sure in the future that I can't, some, sometimes I can't taste stuff or sometimes I can't smell stuff because of my nose. So, mm. but I've heard, I've done a little bit of research and apparently that's like a, a common symptom of COVID that you can't taste, you can't taste or smell stuff. So that was like that for a couple of days, but in terms of like coughing, sneezing, none of that, no fever, no, uh, no, no cold chills or hot chills or whatever you call it. Mm. Um, so, so no, it's, it's just been a really weird time because I feel completely fine, but I know people, uh, they obviously wouldn't be, wouldn't feel comfortable around me. So I've just stayed at my house. I've, you know, the only thing I'll, I'll really do is I'll ride my bike just by myself and, you know, keep a mask on me. And, uh, besides that, man, it's just been a really weird time. Cause I'm not injured. I'm not, I don't feel physically sick, but I've just been staying away from everyone just to, you know, be on the safe side. Yeah. Well, you know, new, new homeowner. So I'm sure you got a lot to do around the house. Yeah, that is actually, I, uh, I stained my, my back fence and I'm getting, uh, I'm getting this, uh, concrete thing ready for a patio or for, uh, for my shed. So yeah, I've, I've done a ton of work at the new house. It's, it's not a, not a terrible place to be stuck in. We actually got a little kitty cat the other day too. He's running around here somewhere. So got a little friend here now, uh, a little Coco over there. And, uh, yeah, we've been uh, just hanging out, man. <laughs> it's weird. Badass UFC fighters got a little kitty cat, <laughs> like mm -hmm. so becoming a becoming a, a family man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got I got I got a little a little little dog and a little kitty cat now. Me and my girl, and uh, yeah, it, you know it is what it is. But uh, I'm I'm ready to to punch some people, man. I haven't been, you know, and I'm, I'm it, it's a weird feeling. I'm like my I had like a pre existing shoulder injury that's been bothering me. That yeah. pretty much went away. I feel good. Right. And, uh, all, all, all my training partners that are posting like sparring, you know, videos and pictures and stuff, man, I get so jealous, but I'll be back soon. I'll be, I'll be there to whoop on them pretty soon. Yeah. I just got a kitty cat and a little dog. And anyway, I'm ready to punch people. <laughs> yeah. I miss it, man. I miss the violence. There's no, there's no violence in my house. You know, we're all, we're all like really chill. So, uh, I do miss like, you know, like, like camaraderie, you know, all my amateur fighters, they're, they're all getting ready to fight soon. Bunch of pro guys. I know Frivola was talking about coming back too. So I just want things to go back to normal, man. Yeah, I would too. I didn't even get a chance to see him last time he was in town. We were texting a little <laughs> yeah. bit and, um, you know, you, you got to kind of put things aside. I haven't been able to get back in the gym myself. I've been doing yeah, a lot of bike tough. riding and yeah, it's, um, it's real tough, man. But at least you, you, uh, you got to do the quarantine before you had kids. So yeah. I don't know if kids are in a plan or not, but I got to tell you, man, quarantine with a toddler is not a fun time. <laughs> I, I've actually, I've heard that. I've heard that from a few people that, you know, have, has been, have been stuck with their, you know, with their children. And it seems pretty rough. Uh, no children yet. Maybe in the future after we, we're married next year. So we'll see what happens with all that. You're a smart man pacing yourself. Yeah. You, you know, you work on the <laughs> house, you're building your career, you're just hitting your prime. So uh, you're doing it the right way. Yep. man. Um, let's see. Thanks, my man. We got uh Phantom Weight, the uh the vacant title. It doesn't it doesn't like fully feel like a title fight to me. So Hudo kind of like, you know, in his own awkward way walked away from the title. And I, I guess you can't blame him, you know, two division champion. I, I heard he has a gold medal. I don't know if you guys knew that. <laughs> He's gonna <laughs> I, I I've I've heard that too. <laughs> but he uh he vacated his title. 
And uh, so now they give it to Peter Yan and, and Jose Aldo. Um, you know, Aldo coming off a loss, but, it, you know, it was a really close fight. And, um, you know, a lot of people upset about that. But, you know, Aldo's a legend. I, I guess I could see, you know, why they would why they would kind of do it this way. But if you take all that away, um, one, you know, I'm still questioning how Aldo is going to look after this weight cut to 135 because he used to struggle making 145 your your weight mm -hmm. class. Billy. I mean, he's yeah. not he's not like a really small dude. Um, mm -hmm. and he has to make 135 on the nose because it's a title fight. And, um, you know, Jan's been, you know, he's been destroying people, but he's been yeah. but he's a big 135 or two. So you may have mm -hmm. one of these guys win and Aldo could retire. It gets vacated again and Jan could move up. <laughs> um, there, yeah. there's a lot of different things that could happen here, but let's, uh, let's take all that, put all that aside and, and just look at the fight here and, and have some fun talking about this. What do you, what do you think, Billy? Yeah. Um, well, my original thought when it was made was, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal because, you know, Aljamain Elger, Sterling still had a fight coming up, um, you know, and, and we still had to kind of see how that played out. Now it's like, man, I just feel bad for Aljamain Sterling. I felt like he's done enough where he deserves a title fight. But just like what you said, Jose Aldo has done so much for the sport. He looked he looked good against Morales, even though he lost a close decision. Um, I think it's gonna be a great fight. I can I can see Peter or I can see Jan, uh, you know, kind of picking him apart a little bit. I think he's just a little bit sharper. Um, but I'm it's almost like I'm more interested in to see like who fights after that. You know what I mean? Like because they got you got Aljamain Sterling on the sidelines. I think you know he's definitely ready for a fight. You got Morales still. You got you know um, who knows what's gonna happen with like Cody Garbrandt and Dominic Cruz still in the wings. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another. Another really exciting division that, uh, you know, uh, Sugar, uh, Sean O'Malley's, you know, coming up, young, up and comer. Um, so, yeah, I think for me, I think uh, Jan might, probably will take it. It would, it would be cool to see Aldo, you know, win that title too, just because he's had such a, a, a crazy long career, um, you know, and he's, he's done everything there's, there's to do at featherweight. Mm -hmm. So definitely excited, uh, definitely interested in that fight. Uh, but I, I would be more interested if uh, – if Sterling was fighting one of those guys, I think uh, like Sterling and Jan was, is the fight to make. Yeah. I, I think a lot of people were on board with that, but I guess they had already had this in the works when Sterling was about to have his last fight with Sanhagen. Yeah. It yeah. It was all of, made up. They were already pushing it through. Um, but yeah, man, it's, it's unfortunate for Aldo because it, he would be in this top 10 greatest of all time conversation. If he never runs into Conor McGregor, the guy was just so dominant. And I feel like everybody just forgot about that. Um, yeah, that one fight. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Jeff, wh what do you think about this, uh, Bantamweight title fight here? Oh, dude, I'm excited for it. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Jose Aldo. Um, you know, I felt like everybody underestimated him after that loss to Conor McGregor, but dude, it, this fight doesn't make sense to me, man. I love Jose Aldo, but he's only got one fight in the Bantamweight division. I really wanted it to be Aljo. Uh, Sterling as well. You know, I think that's kind of like the consensus here. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, I was really high on Aljo after his last win. Um, I can't remember who it was. Um, was it Stamen? Uh, no, Corey was Sandy, Sandy. Sandy. Oh, yeah, yeah, Corey Sandy. I can't believe I couldn't remember that. But, um, yeah, dude, uh, another guy was tearing it up in the bantamweight division. And Aljo smoked him. So, uh, I really felt like it would be Aljo, and I'm kind of with Billy Q on this one, where I'm kind of excited to see what happens after this. You know, once we have an established champion, um, you know, who comes in next? Do you give it to Aljo? Do you give it to maybe Morais? You know, Cody Garbrandt looks like looked really good in his last fight. There were some glimpses of, you know, when he beat uh, Dominic Cruz. Um, but man, dude, uh, you know, Cejudo kind of left a little bit of a mess here, but I can't really. <laughs> Blame Cejudo for leaving. I mean, um, you know, some people, and even I thought that it was a little bit of an early stoppage when he beat Dominic Cruz, but I didn't see him having any issues against Dom in, in the two rounds that they fought, man. Um, mm -hmm. Bill, you remember this when, when yep. he did the reaction is um, that, uh, yeah, it's going to get confusing. <laughs> um, <laughs> that, Bill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I Go on. What did, what did you say? <laughs> yeah, because I got I got a pair of bills on the show. So, um, but, um, dude, you know the way that Cejudo was able to kind of read Dominic's 
movement. And every time Dom went one way, he was getting a leg kicked. And if mm -hmm. he went the other way, the other leg was getting kicked. So, yeah. you know, um, but still a really exciting time uh, for the Bantamweight division, which I think it needed a little bit of a shakeup, uh, especially in like the top title uh, contention. But man, I mean, you got a, a killer's row of guys, man. Aldo, Peter Jan, who, you know, I still feel like he, it's a little bit too soon to be giving him a title shot, but mm -hmm. he, he's a, he's a monster dude. Um, I'm loving Morais. I, I want him to get back in the picture soon. Aljo Sterling, you know, I'll always be a fan of Dominic Cruz. Uh, I'm glad Cody Garbrandt's making a comeback. TJ Dillashaw suspension. It looks like it's going to be up soon. So oh, yeah. we'll see what happens with that. True. Um, yeah, you got still got Jimmy Rivera running around in there too. Yeah, the stack division. What the way it's going to get more sticky is if Aldo wins and then retires, which I could definitely see happening. Like, what else does that guy have to prove? He yeah. wins the belt and then it's like, all right, here you go. You know, I'm good. I've, I've had a full career, and then you got to figure something out. You, you know, obviously, Aljamain Sterling is going to be in there. Who do you put next to him? Is there a rematch with what Ice? You know, you get, um, you know, you just start playing hot potato with this belt, but. Anyway, enough about that. Um, th this is how crazy stacked this card is. We got three title fights, and then the first non-title fight is a rematch of a title fight <laughs> between Jessica Andrade and Rose Nama Yunus. Um, you know, and Rose is looking good in that fight, um, you know, until she wouldn't let go uh, of that Kimura yeah. on, that, uh, on that high crotch. Yeah. Entry. Um, but, uh, Billy... Let's let's start with you. What, what do you think about this rematch here? Yeah. Oh man, a huge uh, Rose Nama Yunus fan. Uh, I definitely, I I I completely agree with what you said. I thought she was winning that fight um, pretty convincingly. You know, I thought she was doing really well in that fight, and she had she like something similar happened er, earlier where she went for like that Kimura trap, and uh, Jessica kind of lifted her, and she kind of got away from it. Um, and then yeah, she just committed to it too much, and uh, unfortunately got dropped on her head. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I definitely think Rose, you know, hopefully she can come back from it. You know, I feel like this, uh, this pandemic, it, it, it kind of changes. It definitely changes the way pretty much everyone's been training. I know for my fight, I wasn't, I was barely at the gym at all. You know, we had a few sparring sessions, but it was mostly training at my house. And then when we went to the gym, it would be an, it was an hour session in and out, you know, got a few good training partners and, and left. So, you know, Hopefully Rose had a good training camp. You know, I know she had a lot of uh, concerns going into this uh, pandemic. Um, you know, same with Max Holloway. Max Holloway was talking about him just doing Zoom meetings the whole time and he didn't have spar at all. So hopefully he's just, you know, bluffing a little bit on that and he's just trying to get in Volkanovski's head. But I, I know from experience, man, these, the training camps are a lot different. Like I couldn't, like when I flew out to my fight, I'm like, man, am I really about to fight right now? Like, cause mm -hmm. it just, it, I wouldn't say it was like a worse training camp. It was just completely different. You know what I mean? Everything was different. Like, you know, I was, I was just doing stuff with like a couple people instead of going to the gym and there being 40 people there. So, you know, you didn't get as many, you didn't get uh, the exact looks that you always wanted. So mm -hmm. I think the, the winner of a lot of these fights is just going to be determined with who had a better pandemic training camp because everyone's training camp got shook up. So I'm obviously rooting for Rose. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll see what happens, man. It's going to be a great fight, I think. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, Andrade is, is a beast. I mean, she's, yeah, that, that's a scary woman for, a, mm -hmm. you know, considering she's 115 pounds. It's, it's like, man, I don't know. I don't know if I'd want to <laughs> get in there. With her. <laughs> she's she's got to be, I think to me, she's the scariest 115 pounder out there just because she's got, she's got like that power and like that not just punching power, but like the way she spiked Rose on her head in that last fight. Yeah. That's, like, that's like crazy lower back strength that you don't see in, in women that size. It's just like, not, it's not common. It's, it's, uh, it's concerning. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, Jeff, give me your thoughts. Well, I'm excited, man. Uh, you know, like Billy Q was saying, uh, Rose is looking super technical. It looked like she had the right strategy going into that fight. It looked like the Kimura trap was the answer to, to that lift, you know, up until it wasn't. But, um, you know, I, I wanted to go a, a little bit longer this time. I want to see, you know, how, how do you respond to, like you said, Andrade's power because she's a monster, dude. I mean, you know, that, that was like something out of a pro wrestling match. Yeah. Uh, 
you know, it, I, I was thinking of like a Bill, there was this wrestler named uh, Bill Goldberg, and he used to do this move called the jackhammer, where he would just like drop people on their head out of like a suplex. So I, I, I it kind of reminded me of that. And, you know, I, I want to see how Rose responds. I think that this time she's just got to keep her distance from her, man. Avoid the grappling um, just to not get thrown around. But, you know, up until that point, she was so technical. And I feel like Rose has come such a long way from, you know, her season of the Ultimate Fighter in terms of becoming more technical in the stand-up, which I really mm -hmm. enjoy. So, uh, I, you know, I kind of favor Rose in this one. But you can never count on Draj out, man. That power is such a wild card. Yeah, for sure. And I, I think she definitely learned her lesson too. Like a lot of people who favor that Kimura trap system, when they get a hold of it, you know, they have so many transitions off of it. They don't want to let it go. Um, but mm -hmm. you know, when you're six feet up in the air, you got to kind of think about letting it go because if, if she just lets it go, then what, what, uh, Andraj did would have been illegal spiking her on her neck. Um, and we would have a different outcome, or she probably would have landed a lot better too. She would have landed. I think, yeah, I don't think she would have landed up like that if she would have kind of like bailed out on it. Yeah. Yeah. You got to kind of just cut your losses on that and, and, you know, work, work from the bottom for a little bit. All right. This next one is speaks to how crazy this fight card is because I feel like nobody's talking about this. To me, this is the sleeper fight on the card. Um, you guys know I always like to give my sleeper fight picks. Um, that not not a lot of buzz around it, but this is a fucking banger in the light heavyweight division. Volkan Ozdemir and Yuri Prozaka, uh, Prochazka. Sorry, um, this guy was the rising light heavyweight champion. He's got knockout power moving forward, moving backwards, moving sideways, moving like walking on his hands probably. And uh, same with Ozdemir. We know that he can just touch people's chin moving backwards and knock them out. Um, so sometimes when you have a matchup like this, it, it becomes kind of a stalemate, but I don't think that's going to be the case here. Uh, Yuri has some awesome wins in Ryzen. He's knocked out CB Dalloway. He's knocked out King Mo. Um, he's, he's, he's got a lot of hype over in Japan, but not a lot of people know who he is, but people are familiar with Ozdemir. Um, so there, there's a lot more to win for Yuri here because if Ozdemir smokes him, it, a lot of people are going to be like, well, who was that guy anyway? Yeah. Um, but I think I feel like if Prozaska comes in and is able to look impressive, um, it, then a lot more people are going to start looking up his highlight reel, which is which is pretty impressive. He's done a lot of awesome things over there, walked away from the light heavyweight title and rising to make his UFC debut. Uh, Jeff, give me your thoughts here. I know you're not too familiar with the this uh, – animal from the czech republic but i know you know who ozdemir is give me your thoughts yeah i, I didn't know that he uh was fighting in rising but uh now i gotta go check his highlights man um and and that's a pretty big list man king mo is no easy task at, at light heavyweight um but now i'm excited bill now you told me a little bit about him and Vulcan ozdemir you listen you know he's gonna put on an exciting fight no matter who it is, he's going to come forward. He's going to bring power. And to see that um, he's going to be matched in both of those categories. I, I don't see his fight going out of the first round, man. Yeah, for sure. I, I predict zero takedown attempts in this one. And I, because I think they have a combined, like combined, they've attempted like half a takedown <laughs> in their career. <laughs> uh, Billy, what do you think about this one? Yeah, it sounds like a great fight. I don't know too much about um, this. Uh, what's his name? The Risen Champion? Yuri Prochazka. Yeah, Yuri. I actually, and it's funny you said that because I actually was looking on Twitter like minutes before we got on, and someone actually basically said very similar to what you said how this guy's one of those guys that has such a pedigree. And basically, what they were saying in the tweet was uh, after he beats. Uh, you know, Vulcan that everyone's going to say, Oh, I've been following this guy for this long and following this guy. So um, for more of like, like a guy like myself who, you know, has, who doesn't really know who he is, it's a great opportunity for him. Um, but you've seen it with other guys, you know, other guys who've, who come over to the UFC. It's a, it's a lot different, you know, it's a, it's a, a lot, a lot of nerves play into it. So it's definitely a different circumstance for him because, you know, he's in the UFC now, but there's also no crowd. So maybe that's not going to, you know, it's maybe not as nerve wracking, you know, because yeah. the, the thing with the UFC is, you know, you walk out there and there's, you know, 15,000 fans and, and, you know, it's being viewed by millions of people. So definitely an interesting debut. 
Um, but it sounds like he's got the resume to that he belongs there. And, you know, my guess is my guess is the UFC's giving him a pretty decent paycheck. And uh, usually when they do that, usually when guys come over and, and they're already making good money, they they throw him to the wolves and, you know, see how he does against a, a high level guy like that. So that's going to be a great fight, too, man. And uh, I agree. It doesn't on paper. It doesn't sound like it's going to go to the ground or go to the judges. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, I, I like finding these little hidden gems. After this show drops, you'll hear other people talk about it because, you know, I'm your, favorite, now. I'm your favorite podcaster's favorite podcaster. Um, there you go. <laughs> uh, I don't want to. I don't want to get into this whole card because we've been we've been doing so much. But uh, there's one more fight I want to get your opinion on, Billy, because I know these guys have to be on your radar, and that's Makwan Amirakani and Danny Henry. Uh, both of these guys coming off of losses, but they're both. Real explosive, really fun fighters to watch in your division. Um, uh, Amir Khani, especially, I feel like has to be on your radar. This this is a guy who I I see you matching up with somewhere down the line. Um, I, I don't know if you've given it the same thought, but give me your thoughts on this fight and uh, you know where these guys are kind of sitting on your radar. Yeah, um, uh, Americani, I've followed for a little. I've you know I've, I've watched some of his fights. I was matched up with uh, Fishgold, Chris Fishgold, um, mm -hmm. and Americani beat Fishgold, so I was able to watch that and kind of break him down a little bit. Um, he's you know very well rounded fighter, just like um, uh, what's the guy's name Henry? He's fighting. Yeah, Danny Henry. Henry. Yeah, I don't know too much about Danny Henry. Is he Canadian or is he European? Um. Yeah. Scottish or something. Too, Scottish. Sc okay, okay. I'm, I was getting mixed up, but uh, yeah, that'll be a that I think that'll be a great fight. Americani is definitely someone on my radar. He's probably, you know, ranked maybe twentieth, and I'm maybe like fortieth or something. So I definitely got a little bit uh, to go. Maybe you know, the next fight or two, uh, I might get matched up with him eventually. Um, but yeah, I think it's gonna be a great fight. I'm definitely gonna uh, pay close attention to it. Um, you know, I haven't. I, I wasn't really keeping track of a lot of these featherweights before I got to the UFC. I didn't want to like, you know, watch all these guys for no reason. But now that I'm here and I'm in the mix and two and zero, I watch these fights a lot differently and a lot closer now. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So I'm got, sure you'll be watching to. this one. For yeah, sure. I'm sure you'll be watching this one closely. I think you're ranked a little higher than 40th, though. I don't know if there's. I, I hope so. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we got to be. We gotta be, we gotta be creeping up that ladder a little bit now. Um, but yeah, Americani probably somewhere around twenty. This is a real deep division. Uh, he's coming off a loss to Shane Burgos, so you know, no shame in that. And uh, Danny Henry, I believe his only loss in the UFC was to Dan Ige. So um, yeah, he, you know, two of the top guys in the division. So this this one will, will be will kind of determine who gets knocked like way down the ladder. Yeah, and, and who's and up who in the top top fifteen up. top. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I mean the winner of this, I have to imagine, it is going to get a top fifteen fight in their next fight. Um, but yeah, Jeff, give me your thoughts on this featherweight matchup, and and where do you think these guys should be on Billy's radar? <laughs> oh, dude, Billy, I'd actually like to see you fight um, Mako and Amir Khani, man. Um, I feel like he pushes the pace. He's pretty well rounded. I, I think that'd be a fun fight seeing you guys go at it. But um, yeah, dude. Uh, Two really tough guys, man. I, I kind of favor Amir Khani in this one um, just because he's got a lot of power, a lot of pace. So I think he mixes it up really, really well. For sure. And we got um, we got some fun fights on this car, on the rest of this card, man. Um, we got an M1 fighter, uh, Roman Bogatov, Russian dude. He's 10-0 making his UFC debut. Um, and he is fighting leonardo santos we got of course Paige van zant uh after a long layoff coming back she's fighting amanda hebas that should be a fun fight amanda hebas a, a huge favorite in that one uh i'm just gonna go through a couple of these and then i'm gonna ask you both you know which on the lower prelims um sticks out to you we got the uh, heavyweights marcin tabura and maxine grishin you know those heavyweights you, you know you're always gonna see a show there and Let's see. I'll give you guys one more to kind of mull over here. I'm going to pick one where I won't butcher the names too much. You know what? Let's leave it at that. So we got <laughs> Paige Van, Amanda Hibas. We got, oh, Elizu Dos Santos and, and uh, Muslim Salikov. That's a fun fight, too. So between that, Paige Van Zant, Amanda Hibas, uh, Dos Santos, Salikov, uh, Leonardo Dos Santos against the undefeated Russian. 
making his UFC debut, Roman Bogatov, and uh, the heavyweights, Marcin Tabura and Maxine Grishin. I'll start with you, Jeff. What's jumping out to you? Dude, I am on uh, this uh, heavyweight fight, man. Marcin Tabura, really tough dude. Um, I don't know too much about Maxim Grishin going into this, but, uh, you know, I'm always excited for uh, a Marcin Tabura about. Uh, he's a tough dude, brings a lot of power, and, you know, these heavyweights, they usually don't go to, into the judges' uh, scorecards here. Yeah, well, Grishin, just for a little background, he's also a Russian making his debut, 36 years old, which is, you know, as we always say, that's a spring chicken in the in the heavyweight division. Uh, but, yeah, he came from the PFL. He has some exciting knockouts over there. Um, Billy, what's uh, what's jumping off the page on the prelims for you? Um, probably out of those ones, probably the, the, the two female fight, the, the female fight with Paige Van Zandt and Amanda. Um, I just think it's a really interesting uh, situation um, because Paige is on her last fight in her contract. So, you know, it's it's almost like is the UFC kind of cutting ties with her and, and giving her a really tough matchup, um, you know, to kind of if she loses, maybe she doesn't feel, you know, maybe they feel like she's not as valuable. Maybe she's already one foot out the door and that's why she got such a tough matchup. Um, but maybe they just, you know, maybe they're they're paying her, uh, you know, they're paying her what they think is a lot. And that's why she's, you know, she's got such a tough fight. So I'm kind of rooting for her because. Uh, you know, I think it's a really tough matchup for her. Um, but I, you know, I think it's going to be a good fight. I think it's gonna be a lot closer than I, I, I heard she was like a, like a minus three fifty favorite. So I think it's going to be closer than that. Um, mm -hmm. but I, I think it's just an interesting fight just because she's on her last fight or in her deal. And to me, a win would make her a lot more value. Like in my opinion, it would, you know, on paper it would make her more valuable, but I think mm -hmm. she kind of, she went on the record, I think saying that, it really doesn't matter. She she thinks she's worth a lot more either way. So it'll that whole situation. It'll just be interesting to see how that plays out, and uh, you know possibly a, a future title contender with whoever wins that. Is that at one fifteen or is that one twenty five? I believe that's that I they're one twenty five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that, that's that makes the you know the uh, the chance for a title fight even even sooner. Even though I don't know if either of them are gonna get uh, past Valerie. Yeah, for sure. Um, they have a Hibas listed it as a straw weight, but I do believe this fight is at 125. Um, but yeah, Hibas is um, she's she's something else, man. She's she's really well rounded, um, and and she's mm -hmm. a fun fighter to to watch. I mean, you know, she plays spoilers. She's got the win over Mackenzie Dern, and then a win over Random Marcos in her last fight. Um, but yeah, that's an interesting perspective with Paige Van Zant and the the UFC kind of playing those games a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting. It's a really fun card. I mean, all the way up and down mm -hmm. and then some lesser known names towards the bottom. But uh, as we all know, those can sometimes be, um, yep. those, those can sometimes be the most exciting fights. My mom's watching. Shout out to, shout out to mom, <laughs> Mama Walker. Um, <laughs> hey, <Mama. laughs> mom, this is a UFC fighter talking here. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> in any case billy i gotta talk to you about something here because um they're reviving the ultimate fighter which i'm excited about because i was a big fan of that show you happen to have been on that show um but the, the way i want to ask you this question is first of all are you ex excited about the revival of the show and second of all if you were going to give a young fighter advice since you've done both of them you're one of few people who has been on both the ultimate fighter and Dana White's contender series. Um, say they had the option like, Oh, I could go on the contender series or I could be on the next season of Cont Tough. contender series, contender series. <laughs> 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 now oh, think man. it over a little bit. Don't, <laughs> but mm. tell me, I mean, I, I know the obvious answer because the, the, there's the instant gratification and it's, it's much less stress. Um, but, uh, do you want to elaborate on the answer at all? Yeah, of course. Of course. So, um, yeah, for me, uh, you know, doing both of them, I just remember thinking, uh, like, so like with my experience, so I, I went on the ultimate fighter, um, you know, we, I, I won my fight to get on the show. So I basically won my fight, uh, got in the show and then lived in the house for seven weeks. So seven weeks of nonstop training, you know, two hours in the morning, two hours, you know, during the day, um, but again, I won the fight to get on the show 
And then that whole season went by, you know, I lost against Saul Rogers, um, but I was there for seven weeks. And that seven weeks is there's no cell phone. There's no music. There's no TV. There's no nothing. So I wasn't, I wasn't, I couldn't talk to my girlfriend at the time, you know, my fiance now, um, couldn't talk to my parents, couldn't talk to my brothers, couldn't talk to my sister, couldn't talk to anyone in my family. Um, and then, so after all that, the pay really wasn't that much. I didn't get a fight. I didn't get a chance to fight in the UFC. And then, um, you know, about two years after that, they started doing the contender series and my boy, our boy, Matt Frivola gets a contender series fight and he goes in there, wins his fight, dominates and gets a UFC contract mm-hmm. right away. So I was like, I already did that on the first episode of the ultimate fighter. You know what I mean? And like, yeah. And then he was already, you know, he basically made more money, you know, and I also did the same thing after, but you make more money, at least at the time, maybe now that they're, maybe now they're paying these ultimate fighter guys more, but I made more money in my one contender series fight than living in that house for seven weeks. So it's, for me, it's kind of like a rite of passage, like, you know, guys who've been on other seasons of the ultimate fighter they went through it so they they know how it is it's it's very it's it's a lot different it's stressful you don't know who you're fighting uh you know everyone in the house is it gets to a point where the whole house is disgusting and messy and no one cleans up after themselves Mm. um and you just get it's just like oh my god it's just like groundhog's day day in and day out but you do get i learned so much man you're my favorite there every single day cody garbrandt was there every day lance palmer all these high level guys just to you know, to go over and the learning experiences were probably better. Um, the payout wasn't better just being there for seven weeks. It was just such a long process. Um, so I would definitely say if I could go back, I'm glad I did it now. But if they said, you know, we'll, we'll give you the same amount of money back in one, I would definitely do the contender series just because there's just, it's just a lot quicker. It's like, a, it's a pretty much like a one day ultimate fighter, but mm-hmm. Then again, I'm sure there's some guys that benefited more from, you know, the all fighter guys who've gotten contracts, who got famous from it. Uh, for me, though, it was just uh, it was just a long, drawn out experience. Yeah, that, uh, I, you know, I didn't really have to be a part of it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, you touched on something that I I consider to be a great point too. Is I think there have been more memorable characters um, that have come out of the ultimate fighter as opposed to the contender series, because the contender series, you know, there's the quick little interviews and, and Laura does a great job, you know, getting, uh, you know, great Mm -hmm. details out of the fighters, even right after they come out of the cage, but the character development on the ultimate fighter. I mean, you've seen these guys on TV and girls every, every week for seven weeks, uh, you get to know them a little bit and, and they Mm -hmm. become memorable. Uh, like the last time we spoke, yeah. Um, and, and when we had first met, I knew I knew about you because I remembered you from the Ultimate Fighter. Um, and there have been guys, you know, I try to keep up with everybody that's that's coming up in this sport, but you know, it's, it's getting to be way too much to keep track of. There have been guys who have won contracts on the Contender Series, and I couldn't pick them out of a lineup. You know, uh, it's just because you have, you know. So if you're, it depends what your goals are. If your goals are to start making yeah. money and get in the UFC. I could see going with the contender series route, but if you're looking to build your brand as a fighter, I think, you know, the ultimate fighter is a, is a good play. And, yeah. and ultimately if your goal is to get in the UFC, I mean, you got to take the, like, nobody's going to get that offer. Like, Hey, would you rather do the contender series or, <laughs> or the ultimate fighter? It's going to like, whatever they have going on yeah. is, is going to be your opportunity to be your opportunity. Like, I don't even have to ask you if your only opportunity was the ultimate fighter you know, would you, would you, yeah, you're going to do it. Yeah. And I do remember, I don't know if you guys, I don't know if you guys were watching this, but I do remember there was one guy and I don't, I don't follow him. I don't really remember how he did, but I remember he won a fight on the contender series. And after it, Dana White was like, Hey man, great fight. You know, we're not ready to give you a contract yet, but you just won a chance to f- fight on the Ultimate Fighter. And I was like, "Oh man, they got him! They got him!" I was like, "Oh my god!" I was like, "This poor guy." And you can kind of see in his face, he was like, "Like you're kind of happy, but like you could have just got right in." You know what I mean? So uh, uh, whoever that that poor guy is, I I hope it I hope it worked out for him. Yeah, that's like you climbed a mountain, and they're like, "Actually, the peak is over there." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not so fast. <laughs> oh, you wanted to climb to the top of Mount Everest? Yeah, it's another three thousand <laughs> feet. 
up that way. That's yeah. probably the guy that they offered both to, and he picked the contender series. And they're like, "All right, cool, man." Yeah, <laughs> like you're you're on that show anyway, bud. So yeah, me and uh, me and Alan Cruz were talking about it right after it happened. Like, uh, it probably happened a couple of years ago now. But I remember me and Alan were like joking about it. We were just dying laughing, we're like that poor guy, because you know Alan fought on the contender series too, and he got he got right in. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that, that poor guy, that, and like those developmental deals, I get, I guess, you know, the developmental deals aren't as bad because I, I've heard of guys like Chase Hooper. Um, he was only like 20 years old or 19, maybe. Yeah. He, he got, uh, he got, he was on the contender series. They gave him a developmental deal, but basically he got to fight like in other, other promotions. So he got to, he basically got ufc money and then he went and got to fight for like titan and these other promotions Mm -hmm. while making ufc money so that wasn't as bad um that's not as bad as uh you know having to basically be on tough after but you know however you get there everyone's journey is different and uh you know it all worked out for me and now no matter what happens like even these last uh you know like when i went to vegas for my fight they're like all right you got to take the test you got to stay quarantined in this hotel and it, it literally just felt like the ultimate fighter again, you know, with, with these grown men telling you what to do and you kind of mm-hmm. have to listen to them because, you know, it's your job. So I think that uh, it kind of builds character. And now there's really like a, if they tell me, hey, we want you to fight someone in, in four or five days or like a week or whatever, I have no problem with it because that's what you do on the show. You just, you know, you're just getting yeah. ready to fight and, and they tell you to fight and you're ready. Yeah. And then we also have guys who lost on the contender series, but you know, their phone numbers stored close to the top because, you know, Sean Shelby or whoever remembers them and they need somebody to step in and they've gotten opportunities to come into the, come into the UFC. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of different paths. I, I think, and we were talking about this last week on the show. I think it all comes down to like, you have to be ready to fight at any time because if the UFC is in your town and something happens where they need a body to step in there and you're available and you're in shape, um, you might get that phone call or you have to let them know, you know, go crazy, like tweeting the UFC and, and Sean yeah. and Dana and whoever are like, like, Hey, I'm ready to go. I'm here. I'm on weight. Um, you, you know, I think Sean Shelby himself has said, you know, I have over 500 fighters on this roster. I have to offer them three fights a year. Like it's kind of hard to recruit new pe- people right now, but if you're ready to go, you're ready to fight. That's the quickest path to get in. Yeah. Um, and I, I think you are. Yeah. yeah. The, during this pandemic, I think this is uh, the most opportunities we've seen, especially, you know, you mentioned like when they're coming to your town, but now it's like, if you're American, you know, like if you were American during this last stretch in Vegas, my boy, uh, Julian Arosa, he was, uh, you know, he was on, he was on the ultimate fighter with me. Uh, he did very well on the ultimate fighter. Then he got, he won a fight, lost a fight, got cut, won a fight in the contender series, didn't get signed, but then got signed later uh lost a few fights got cut again um and then just recently this past uh like what last weekend or last week um they called him on uh short notice they called him on short notice because someone tested positive for COVID, i think or maybe someone got injured um he took the fight on four days notice and one got a performance of the night bonus so he ended up you know not being in the ufc to getting re-signed to winning his fight and getting another 50 K. So now he's, uh, he's living good now just because he was ready at the right time. Hold on, Billy. I think Bill froze on us, but I, I actually remember Rosa, dude. I remember, uh, hearing his name and, and remembering, uh, I think he was losing two rounds and then, uh, got the submission in the third. So that, that was a yep. pretty awesome fight. Uh, Bill, you ready over there? Yeah, we cut. We lost connection. I don't know if it was. Was it just me that cut out? Yeah. <laughs> All right. For me, it was. Yeah. Okay. So it was just me. All right. So I'm the only one who missed out. Uh, I guess my internet froze there for a second. But yeah, Julian Arosa, and then he came back and and had that impressive performance against uh, Sean Woodson, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he looked phenomenal. Um, that guy's a that guy's a real tricky fighter. He's like he's like six foot fifteen. <laughs> he's like, yeah both 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 those guys over six feet tall fighting at 45 it's uh very interesting yeah yeah you're starting to see a lot more of that too um you know these these longer guys who are who are able to make the the weight uh, even at even at 55 seeing these guys like six three six four is it is kind of crazy to me um because you know you see these guys in person and it's like how 
How are you doing that? Yeah, like 155. <laughs> anyway, Jeff, I don't know if uh, in the hour that I was gone when I lost a uh, connection there, if you had any thoughts on this whole ultimate fighter versus uh, contender series thing, but um, he, you know, I, I think Billy covered it pretty in depth, but did you have any thoughts on what he had to say? No, I mean, I, I'm with Billy, man. Uh, because to me, dude, you know, fighting is such a hard job. Uh, so to me, you know, the faster you can get to the UFC, good for you, man. Um, but, I, you know, I, I'm a fan of both. I love the Ultimate Fighter. Um, the, the show has produced some very memorable characters and moments. So I'm glad that it's coming back, dude. I mean, that's definitely something to, to you know, sink your teeth into. And, you know, how many great rivalries of, of coaches that we had. Like, remember when Rampage – started to headbutt the door i just <laughs> broke the entire door with his head like you know nobody's gonna forget that but yeah um you know to me you know i i feel like you fighting is is such a tough road you know i i'm somebody who i couldn't be a pro fighter it's not in me but um you know for me if you can avoid kind of the some of the roadblocks and stuff and just get straight into it and get your career going more power to you man yeah. I mean, it's a long road. You know, I've heard your coach, Matt Arroyo, Billy, talk about how, you know, everybody sees Billy and all the success he has. And they think, you know, he just became famous because he went on the contender series. But you didn't see the 10 years of hard work that built up to that. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's it's what it takes, man. And, uh, you know, it's it was a lot longer than I thought it was going to. You know, that's what they say. You know, usually goals take a, are a lot harder than you thought. You know, I thought I could have got on in, you know, 2015. It's, it's always been my goal to, you know, to, to try to be a world champion. Um, and then, you know, then I thought I was, I thought I was almost in on the ultimate fighter. And then I beat Mark Stevens. And I'm like, oh, now I'm in, you know, and then I lost a fight and I'm like, oh my God, now what? You know, and then I won two more fights. And I knocked out Eric Reynolds. I thought I was in, then I tore my ACL. And then it was like, it was just one thing after another. Um, but I just had to, you know, I think I was a little bit, I think I was a little bit too stubborn and I just didn't want to give up on it. And, uh, you know, it, it worked out for me. Yeah, for sure. And not only did it work out for you, but you know, when you first came back to the contender series, like, Oh, Billy, Billy Q, he was on the ultimate fighter. He was that guy who was on the ultimate fighter. Yeah. Now that's not even a thought. Now it's, Oh, it's Billy Q that fucking savage. Who's on a three fight <laughs> win streak in the UFC. Yeah counting the contender series and, and you're putting on like crazy impressive performances. Um, I want to get a couple more things out of you, you know, before we kind of call it quits here. Uh, we usually don't look like to look uh, too far down the line and I don't even know when this fight is booked. Uh, but your buddy Ryan Hall, who was on your season of the ultimate fighter, just booked a fight against uh, Ricardo Lamas. And it's mm -hmm. hard for Ryan to get fights. Like nobody wants yeah. to get in there with this guy. Cause he doesn't have, a high number next to his name, but it's a high risk. It's like a high risk, low reward fight for a lot of these guys. But, you know, Lama's stepping up. He's, you know, 38 years old at this weight class is, um, you know, it's got to be no easy task uh, still being able to do this. If he was a heavyweight, it'd be like, well, he's still no got, run. Another, he's got another 12 years in him, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but at this weight, but it, it's an interesting matchup, you know, because, um, you know, Ryan Hall, obviously a tough matchup for anybody, but Lamas has not been known to play spoiler. You know, he was like mm -hmm. submitted Charles Oliveira. Like who does that? Yeah. And then, and then uh, you know, knocked out Jason Knight and then had, you know, kind of some up and down uh, matchups there. Uh, but Ryan Hall is just a, an awkward matchup for anybody. Like, he's not afraid to throw wacky strikes because he doesn't care to go to the ground. Um, uh, but yeah, give me your thought. I know, you know, Ryan personally is a buddy of yours. So, uh, did you hear this fight announcement and what do you think about it? Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I, I knew it was, uh, I knew it was announced before. And then, um, actually at right after my fight, you know, I got probably, you know, a couple, like maybe thousand text messages and Ryan's was like the first one, just like the timing of it. It was like the first one I saw. So I was, I was actually just chatting with them the other day too, um, about this. And I think it's Ryan's one of those guys and it's, it's not, it's not just the public who says he's like, a very tough matchup and no one wants to fight him. I've actually heard Sean Shelby mentioned that before that like no one wants to fight Ryan Hall and, and you can kind of see why, you know, he's uh, what seems, you know, what, what you mentioned, like his wacky strikes, that's something that he actually like those spinning back kicks and, and all those things. Those are all things that he practices day in and day out. You know what I mean? They, everyone looks at him. They're like, Oh, he's just a really good jujitsu guy. 
But if you look at his, like how he closes distance on kicks and how he sets them up, you know, like his role, his like a uh, Imanari role looks like, you know, like his setup to that is the same as like his kicks. You know what I mean? So the way he's able to, to mix everything together and just how smart he is, he's very intelligent. Um, and like you said, he's got no matter, no matter what happens, if, if the fight goes to the ground, anyone's in trouble. You know what I mean? It's very hard to, uh, to, to beat him on the ground. You know, you're not just going to like, you, you can't just like out wrestle him cause he's going to find a way to submit you. Um, so yeah, I definitely have Ryan, obviously my biased opinion is, uh, I think Ryan's going to be a little bit too much for Lamas. Uh, obviously it's a, it's a, you know, it's a fist fight and, and Lamas does have, I think the experience advantage, definitely the UFC advantage, the UFC experience advantage. Um, but yeah, I definitely think Ryan's going to, going to take that one, but hats off to Lamas for, for stepping up and taking it. And, and who knows, maybe I could be wrong. Um, I'm just glad people are fighting him and, and, uh, I'd like to, I'd like to see the UFC, I would like to see the UFC give him a higher ranking. Um, because, you know, if all these guys are turning him down, there's obviously a reason for it. But mm. I think if they gave him a higher ranking, you know, if they put him at number 10 or number nine or number eight or whatever, a lot more guys would be willing to fight him. Um, and that would kind of speed up the process because he's been taking these long breaks because everyone keeps avoiding him. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, Lamas in, uh, you know, 30 something fights has never been submitted. So that's an interesting Whoa, that's thing. Inter that's 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 I didn't know that. It's interesting. It, he's got a he's got a submission win over Charles Oliveira. So if yeah, that's not a, that. if that's not a feather in your jujitsu cap, yeah, I don't know. What is. And he's got that he's got that scary power, man. I mean, he could turn mm -hmm. dudes' lights off at this weight. Um, I think it's a really fun fight, and obviously, you know, Ryan Hall is a really he's one of those guys that that became a really interesting character to a lot of people because of the ultimate fighter. I'm tough. Um, yeah. 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 And it, that was interesting because you can kind of tell like nobody really wanted to get matched up with him because a lot of people hadn't seen that 50, 50, uh, leg lock series mm -hmm. before. So they're like, what is this? And now people kind of know about it, but he's developed it like so far beyond what it was that it's still like a lot of people are behind the eight ball on that, you know, except for the few people who were privileged enough to continue training with him a couple of times, um, mm -hmm. you know, after being on the show with him. Um, one more thing I want to hear from you, Billy, because I've heard this story. I've heard you tell this story about um, how you met up with Rashad Evans and you might have might have had a oh, couple yeah. of drinks. And oh, um, yeah. we like talking about drinking on this show. It's like kind of our thing here. MMA on the rocks. Um, I happen uh -huh. to be drinking some tequila here. As we've been nice. talking, I've got some, uh, yeah, I've been on a tequila kick lately. This is Terramana. It's, um, nice. it's actually the rocks tequila brand. Oh, okay. I've heard yeah, it. Yeah. I've heard it mentioned. Wayne Johnson on the back. Um, it's a nice, like, uh, you know, mid level mid shelf tequila, you know, it's not, it's not up there with like the Don Julio's and stuff, but like, it's a nice sipper, man. I've been sipping this, you know, since we started the episode. So while I'm sipping on some tequila, I'd like to hear about this interaction you had with, with Rashad Evans. What were the circumstances and, and what led up to this? Yeah, yeah, no problem. So this was uh, um, during my UFC debut. Um, so it, it was fight week. And, uh, you know, so Rashad Evans, I grew up uh, in a small town outside of Buffalo. It's called Lewiston, New York. It's a very, it's like the smallest little town. I love it. I, I go back every year. I'm going to go back uh, when, when I can. Um, so Rashad Evans is a little bit older than me. He grew up in the town right next to us, Niagara Wheatfield. So Lewiston, like where I grew up and Niagara Wheatfield have kind of a rivalry. Like they, we kind of, they're both like two small towns that kind of go back and forth, you know, a little bit of rivalry. Um, when I went to high school, you know, we would go to like parties where there'd be like Wheatfield guys and we'd get in fights with them. And like, you know, one of their guys would try to date one of our girls and vice versa. We, we were, we were always getting in fights and stuff with those guys, not Rashad. Cause he's, you know, he was already graduated. Um, yeah. Imagine but, Rashad Evans wants to date your girl. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> let, it, let it go, man. <laughs> um, but no, uh, so Na Lu Lu Luport and Niagara Wheatfield always had like a little bit of a rivalry. And I always, you know, I knew of Rashad Evans from, you know, the ultimate fighter from being a world champion from all that. And I, and I knew where he was from. I knew exactly like where he grew up. So I've always had a lot of, a lot of respect for him. And, and, you know, he was like one of my favorite fighters because he was from our hometown. So I meet Rashad and I met him, I met him once before, just like shook his hand. Nice to meet you. But 
during fight week, he was actually there with Justin Gagey and Trevor Whitman. And they were, um, they were making these, uh, they're, they were basically talking to fighters about these new products they're making. And then Rashad was also there, um, doing some broadcasting. So I meet him there like the first day I meet him on Tuesday and I'm like signing the posters or whatever. And I introduced, you know, I'm talking to him. He's like, Oh, nice to meet you. Yada, yada. I'm like, yeah, I know you're from Wheatfield. You know, we've been stomping you guys out for a while now. And right away we were like busting balls, like kind of joking, like, <laughs> Oh yeah, you, you Lewis and kids are always talking, you know, shit or whatever. And uh, so we hit, we, we hit it off right away and we're just, just joke, you know, busting balls. So it was cool. Him and uh, him and Justin Gagey actually brought us up and me and Frivola and they took our measurements and they said they were going to send us a bunch of equipment, but then they actually sent us a letter last month saying they, uh, they had to pause that because of COVID, which, which sucks because we were going to get a bunch of free equipment, which, you know, yeah. I love free stuff. So this is Trevor um, Whitman's uh, Onyx brand that he yes, does like the headgear and stuff like that. Yep. 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 They explained it all to us. They're like, yo, this is like, um, you know, Justin Gagey. It was, it was crazy. It was Justin Gagey, Rashad Evans, me for all, all like this little hotel room. And he was telling us about all these products and we were just happy to be there. So <laughs> this is, this is fight week. We're just hanging out with Justin Gagey the whole fight week and Rashad Evans. So we were talking and stuff and uh, just kind of busting balls. And so fight night happens, you know, I go out and, and, and uh, I get the win. And, um, right after the fight, like we always do, you know, I, I don't drink for like months before, you know, I, and, uh, so right after the fight, you know, I just win my UFC debut, we go out to the bars, start drinking, you know, tipping them back and uh, just like what you're doing. <laughs> um, and we, we go out and we start drinking and, and we go out and then the bars closed at like 2 AM. So like, it wasn't that late of a night, like 2 AM mm -hmm. we go and get a bunch of, we go and get a bunch of pizza. And so we get a bunch of pizza and I love, like I'm from Buffalo. So we, we eat blue cheese with everything. So like pizza and blue cheese. So I remember we got a couple pizzas and they had a bunch of like blue cheese things. So I had a bunch of them in like my pocket. The reason I'm telling you, don't, there's a reason why I'm telling you this. Don't worry. Not just I'm a fat ass. So I get the pizza and I get all this. I have like my UFC walkout jacket and I have like a bunch of blue cheese, like packets stuffed in there. Okay. So we go back to the hotel. We, we go back to the hotel and I'm ready to, to, you know, eat the rest of this pizza. So me and my girl go back to the hotel room. We start walking through and like the fighters hotel and there's fighters are like, I saw Paul Felder walking by and like we said hi to him and everything. And, uh, I, we, we take the elevator up to my room. So we take the elevator up and we're on like floor, you know, the fourth floor or whatever. And so we take it up and like, while my elevator door opens, across the hall another elevator opened and it was Rashad Evans so I get out and I see Rashad and instead of like busting each other's balls he was just super happy for me he's like oh man what's up man Billy what's up bro he's like man that fight was crazy he's like man you dominated that guy and I'm kind of looking at him and like we were both kind of like kind of drunk you know it was like it was two in the morning we, we you know he, he was already done working for the day and I already got done fighting so mm -hmm. I right away I'm like Rashad I got to get a picture with you. You know, I'm a big fan. Like I want to get a picture with you. So my girl's still with us. So she takes a picture of us real quick. And, uh, he starts asking me, he's like, Hey man, I want to ask you like, how do you, how do you like to set up your takedowns? And like, just an innocent question. And you know, I'm drinking, I'm, I'm talking to him and I'm like, I'm like, what am I going to tell Rashad Evans? You know, he knows all this stuff, but right before I go show him, I'm like, you know, I got to like take my jacket off because I got all these all I thought was all these blue cheese. Like I'm like, I'm about to, I'm about to get blue cheese everywhere. So when he asked me, I said, hold on a second, Rashad, I got to take this off. So I go and take my jacket off while I'm doing that. He's watching me. So he takes off his jacket. He's wearing like a suit. So he takes off his sports coat too. And I'm like, Oh God, what what, what did I get myself into? So first we start off and I'm, I'm showing him like this, like this silly little takedown. I like throw a punch and I grab the single leg and then he starts doing it. But when he starts doing it, he shows me his takedown, but he basically just tackles me. <laughs> so he basically tackles me. And then it turns into this, like this 20 minute thing where we're basically grappling with each other. So he tackles me and he shows me, and then I don't want to look like a bitch. So I like basically do mine, but I do it like more intensely. You know, I like grabbed him. And then he's like, no, 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 you got to do it like this. And next thing you know, we're literally grappling, like two drunk dudes grappling each other at 2 a.m. And, you know, my my girl my girl took the picture. And then after it, she could tell we were about to start, like, like messing around. So she's like, I'll just see you in the room. So she left. And we ended up grappling for, like, 20 minutes. And he's showing me all these moves. 
And uh, he's like tackling me. It was pretty much like a, like a wrestling practice. Um, yeah. And that took place at like two to three in the morning, right after my fight. And the next morning, like when I woke up, that was like the thing I was most excited about. I was like, man, that, that whole thing was so, so cool because he didn't have to do that. And uh, you know, if he would have known like how much I looked up to him growing, like growing up to that, you know, getting to that level, you know, that was Rashad Evans. He was, you know, world champion. He's from my hometown. Um, and yeah, I got a chance to grapple with him for like an hour. We still got a picture where we're both just like, uh, uh, but, uh yeah, that was, uh, probably, probably the best experience I had fight week besides actually getting the win and, and the debut. Um, and that was, uh, you know, just a special moment for me, even though we were, we were intoxicated, uh, but we had, we had a great time and, uh, I don't even know if he remembers it, but for me, it was a, it was a big moment for me. <laughs> that's, that's how the best stories happen. When when people are over the top and under the influence, as we like to say, yeah, it was just uh, it was just us. It was just us two. Uh, it was just us three. And then Bree went went to bed, and uh, I got to grapple Rashad Evans for like an hour. And that was technically on my birthday, so uh, it was technically you know the my birthday was uh, spent you know grappling with Rashad Evans all night. So it was pretty cool. That's awesome. Tell me, your girlfriend took the blue cheese and put it in a refrigerator while this was going on, dude. You know what? So. The funny part about that was we already ate, we ate some pizza earlier and we brought like literally like a full pizza and all this blue cheese back. And then the next morning we, we drove over to my brother's who lives in Virginia. He lives about 20 minutes away. We didn't, we didn't even eat the pizza or the blue cheese after. So I had a, I had a giant pocket full of blue cheese packet for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> po- pocket full of blue cheese. I think that's an Almond Brothers album. <laughs> um, <laughs> it is. It's, i mean I'm a, I'm a big blue cheese guy blue cheese over ranch every day of the week it it's i agree with that statement for sure i i think putting ranch on like chicken wings is is that's yeah. gross to me um yeah, blue cheese with wings all day you probably could have gotten rashad to have some blue cheese pizza with you since he's a western new york guy too i know now that i think about it i should have offered it to him but we were just so caught up in the moment he wanted to see my takedown and of course everything he told me i was like what else? What else? What else? I was just so excited, just so excited to, you know, to get the win and just to hang out with, you know, just to see him. It was just so random and it was so cool. Did you, um, did, do you remember some of those details? Like some of those things he showed you or were you just like, you were so high from winning your UFC fight and yeah, you know, you know what the funny thing was, he was basically showing me like what I already practiced, you know, like he was basically showing his version of it, but yeah, mm-hmm. I remembered it. I, I remember it pretty well. It was, uh, it was very similar to, uh, so what I was already, you know, I kind of showed him one way and he, he basically just showed me a, a little variation of it. But of course, I'm going to I'm going to try to do it that way now on, from now on. Yeah, for sure. And you, you skipped over a very important detail in this story. You told us what you put on your pizza. You didn't tell us what you were drinking at the bar, which is like kind of what we talk about here. Yeah, uh, that's that's something I kind of forget. Well, I'm a, I, uh, you know, right after I always wake up a, after fights, I always wake up like with like this weird like soreness but like uh, like it's like a hangover like painful soreness no matter how well i do in the fight i always got bumps and bruises Mm -hmm. and we always we always drink after it you know this last fight not as much it was just me and frivola we had a couple of drinks because everything was closed in vegas Mm -hmm. but yeah every single every single fight night i always wake up like super like sore and super hungover so like I, i always have like a hangover and like pain from fighting so I definitely, I know I drank some Corona lights and I probably had a bunch of like Captain and Cokes. Captain and Cokes are just like, for me, they just taste like soda. So I can just drink those pretty easily. Mm-hmm. Um, and I usually drink Corona lights. Corona lights are like my go-to beer. I know people are hating on Corona because the whole virus thing, but they had nothing to do with it. So <laughs> cor- cor- Corona lights, uh, Captain Morgan, some, some, maybe some, some crown shots, fireball shots, tequila shots. Uh, yeah, usually a little bit of everything. And I'm, I'm a, a lightweight because, uh, I get, I get drunk really fast because all of training camp, I never drink during training camp mm-hmm. and I always drink the night of the fight. So like I mix in like, you know, cutting weight, dehydrating myself, making weight, fighting, and then I mix in a bunch of drinking with that. So it's always like, just like a bad recipe. I always wake up with like, uh, like so much like pain and like, uh, you know, regret usually from like drinking so much while I fought. So yeah, <laughs> that's usually how how it goes. All that sugar doesn't help either. The sugar in the soda and then rum. I is know made, rum is made from sugar, so that's gonna dehydrate you even more. Um, I know, but I can't help myself with a nice like a nice soda with a nice Captain Morgan. It's just it's so smooth and 
Um, you know, I don't mind drinking like, like the hard stuff, like, like tequila straight like that. I, I wouldn't be doing that right now, but, uh, you know, usually after a fight, whatever, whatever people like, usually people are buying me shots and stuff. I'll just take whatever they give me. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, people always buying shots. You can't say no. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm not a UFC superstar. People want to buy me shots because like they're, they're, maybe they've seen the show and they're, they're, they're friends. Yeah. They're, they're, those aren't the kind of people. Friends of the show. Yeah. I don't think I want to be around those people too much. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys, but a lot of you are weird. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Jeff, what do you think about this Rashad Evans story? I really wanted to get him to tell this on the show. I wanted to, to save it for last year, but uh, I, I know you have some good feedback. Oh, dude, it's awesome. Like, I, I love seeing you, like, fanboy out, man. Because um, <laughs> that would be me. Like, that would be my reaction if I ever got to grapple with, like, Alexander Gustafson or, or like, you know, or, like, Dominic Cruz. I, I would just have, like, a complete freak out and just forget, like, what I learned and just, like, oh, man. But, um, dude, that's awesome um, that you and Rashad Evans just kind of started grappling in a hotel. Um yeah, dude. Uh, yeah, no that 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 is an awesome story, and like it it, it kind of makes me see you as like a normal person because I because I'm over here I'm like I'm talking to a UFC fighter, but like <laughs> seeing your reactions to that is pretty awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah. I was definitely uh you know and it was funny because like during fight week I didn't act it like you know I kind of just played it cool. I was like oh yeah you know overshot whatever. But then like when we were drinking and, and uh, I already fought, I was like oh man like this is and I would still like I, I get excited when I see certain guys like that. So it's all good, man. I lo I love this uh, this life that we live. And um, it, I know it wasn't was it your fiance at the time or was she your girlfriend? Mm -hmm. Um, was she cool about it when when she went back to the room or the next day? You were like so what do you want for breakfast? And she's like why don't you go ask Rashad. <laughs> yeah. No, it was uh she was uh she she she's the best. She was she was cool with it. And uh I think she knew that, you know, she had a long night too. She watched the fights and she was drinking, you know, with with my whole family throughout the whole day. So she was she was happy for me when we saw him, but she was basically like, "Oh, you guys are gonna start wrestling now?" She's like, "I'm going to bed," like, and I don't blame her. She, and then when I came back, I was like, I was like, "Baby," like I was like a, a kid that just got like his favorite candy. I was like, baby, like you wouldn't believe this. Like, and she's like, okay, I'm like, let's, let's go to bed now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you would have the same reaction if she saw like, you know, some celebrity that she liked. Yeah. And some... we, we've, we, we've had, had situations like that. Like I didn't like, she didn't know who Rashad Evans was. We went to uh, one of my, the contender series fight. Actually, we went to this, uh, we went to this place. It was like, it was a uh it was like a restaurant and it was from like a tv show show she watches uh vanderpump rules oh and yeah there was there, yeah. Were, there was one of the there was one of the, like the girls from that show and she's like oh my god and like i i couldn't care less but like i took a picture for her you know this is kind of what we do for each other so when she's excited i'm excited and uh vice versa yeah my my wife's really into that show so i've i've seen bits and pieces yeah. of it and now uh... yeah, yeah you know you know the deal I imagine she didn't start wrestling with a girl from Vanderpump Rules, though. That probably didn't. No. They probably no, talked about. <laughs> yeah, they were like she was the the one girl. She to me, she I, it's like some like uh, you know they're, they're from like girls and guys from like L.A. And to me, she seems kind of like like snobby, but mm -hmm. whatever. Like R Rashad was way cooler. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For me, at least. I, I think all three of us are on board with, with that sentiment there, but yeah. um, that's awesome, man. Um, I, I'm really happy for you and all the success you've seen. You know, I've seen you basically living in the gym and I, I see like how happy you are there, you know, just as happy as you are telling the story about Rashad Evans. And uh, I couldn't be happier for you realizing all this success because I know that you genuinely love this sport and you genuinely love what you're doing. And, you know, all the all the private lessons you do at the gym and the, the people you interact with there, like everybody has great things to say about you. So it's always good to see good people having success. So. Uh, you know, we're we're definitely big supporters of you here on this show, and and I'm, I'm glad you you spent an hour and a half just kind of bullshitting with us, uh, talking fights. Yeah, and no problem, Bill. I appreciate it, man. It's always good. Uh, you know, it's always good doing podcasts with people that you know. Um, you know, you know, you like, and uh, you know, I like drinking, and I like I like MMA on the rocks too. So uh, I appreciate you having me, like always, brother. Anytime. Yeah, man. Um, so it's uh, Billy Q MMA 
on uh, social mm -hmm. media. Is that your handle everywhere? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, give Billy a follow. And uh, you, you got any plugs, any any shout outs you want to give? The floor is yours, my man. Oh, uh, man, just thank the, all my sponsors and, and really just I, I, everyone who's, uh, you know, kind of new to following me. I just appreciate the sport. I've gotten a you know pretty big bump in the last couple of fights. And, uh, you know, I just my goal is the same, man. Just keep doing what I've been doing. Keep putting on exciting shows and, and trying to keep climb those rankings and, and get a world championship eventually. So appreciate all the all the fans supporting me. Appreciate you guys having me. And uh, it's nice meeting you, Animal. Oh, it's, it's nice meeting you too, Billy. And like I told you before we started, I'm a fan of the chaos that you create. And I explained this to Bill um, after your Spike Carlisle fight, is you can create scrambles, and, and out of all that chaos, you find order, which which I'm a huge fan of. And, you know, your relentless pace, man. I mean, Spike, Spike Carlisle was breathing heavy after that fight. So, um, you know, after watching you fight, I'm definitely a fan, and I appreciate you being on the show, man. No problem, man. I appreciate you guys. Yeah, and uh, you, you created like one of the most popular UFC memes uh, of the year too, with that <laughs> with that punch from behind uh, when the when he walked away with ten seconds left on the clock. Um, so awesome, man! Um, you know we wish you continued success, and um, everybody give Billy a follow. And uh, if you guys want to get a hold of the animal here, it's at animal underscore Wilson Twitter and Instagram. You guys know how to get a hold of me. It's at MMA on the rocks everywhere. Let us know what you guys are thinking and drinking out there. Let us know what you think about you know our breakdown of UFC 251. We'll be watching the fights. I don't think we're gonna do a live uh, fight companion for that next week, but uh, we'll be back next Sunday. If you guys want an MMA on the Rocks t-shirt, the link for that is in my Instagram bio. Go check that out. Um, if you find yourself over the top and under the influence at all times, um, then go grab a shirt. Or, you know, just keep listening to the show. We like that, too. All right. Until next time. Cheers, everybody. Goodbye. See you guys. Thank you.